What is going on everyone? Welcome back on Block Gems. Today I want to talk about art blocks and specifically I want to discuss a set of insights on analytics that I have developed exclusively for you guys. I doubt that you will find it, them anywhere else. But before we jump into the content, uh, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button because it's only thanks to your support that I can keep on bringing new content into the channel. So let's jump right in. And uh, uh, as you guys might remember, I have discussed already a couple of times art blocks. And the very first time that I discussed it uh, was probably back in February or, or March, or maybe it was maximum the beginning of March. And I will put uh, a, a link to that video in the cards above. Uh, I was super bullish about one specific sub collection, which was the Chrome Squiggle, which is the this avatar here represents a Chrome Squiggle, and I listed all the reasons why I was so bullish about that uh, specific uh, sub collection, and uh, uh, it turned out that it was a good call. Uh, full disclosure: I do not own anymore any. Uh, NFT from Artblocks curated, but I did uh, in the past. And uh, uh, what I wanted to analyze is some of these sub collections. So, for instance, Chrome Squiggle, Fidenza, uh, Aerial View, and so on and so forth. And what I found out is that it is very hard to look at these different uh, sub collections, to find analytics, to find information about these different sub collections. Um, if you go on OpenSea, for instance, you can find some basic metric about the entire Artblocks curated uh, project, but you cannot find information or, in my opinion, meaningful information about the sub projects. So basically the initiative, uh, the initiatives of the various artists. Um, you just know that there are 36.2 thousand items, uh, that these are the number of owners uh, throughout the entire project of Artblocks curated, but it's hard to find out more than that. And it is exactly why I started to develop these analytics, because I wanted to go a level deeper and I wanted to share this information with you. So I hope you are excited as I am for what's coming. Um, I wanted to take one specific uh, uh, project as a start, which is the Chrome Squiggle, specifically uh, this project here, uh, that you might find already extremely expensive in terms of how the floor price has increased in the past couple of months. Um, and um, right now we are looking at a floor price of almost nine ether, but we have no way to understand many other metrics. For instance, how is this token distributed? We do know that for the entire art blocks curated, project, there are 5.8k owners, better said addresses, uh, but we do not know how many people or how many addresses own the Chrome Squiggles. And bear in mind, this is, starts to become a pretty important NFT in the NFT space because you need to fork on 26, 27, I, I can even do the math right now, k to um, to own one of these. It, it is a very expensive token to, to buy, uh, not precisely up to par with the Bored Apes, but it is in that uh, ballpark number. And if you go here at the Bored Ape Club, you see how many owners are there for this specific token. You know that there are 10,000 Bored Apes and 5.3K owners, but you cannot derive that same conclusion for the Chrome Squiggles, because there are so many projects in the Artblocks curated. It's not just Chrome Squiggles, and all the owners of Artblocks curated are 5.8k. So how do we solve this problem? I went and did a bit of, uh, say, deeper level analysis on this project. First of all, there are 9,193 Chrome Squiggles in circulation. And this is a data point that you can find on the Artblocks uh, website to begin with. So I'm not telling you anything new. But what I'm telling you that it's new 
is the number of owner addresses. 1,712 addresses reportedly own Chromis Squiggles. This is super, a super, super important data point. And here is why. If you see that the distribution of a given token on a given NFT is super concentrated, this is typically not a very good sign. And why it is not a very good sign? It is not a very good sign because they can, the, the owners of large amounts of this very token can manipulate the price very easily. And here for the Chrome Squiggles, we have one address that owns over 1,000 Chrome Squiggles out of a total supply of 9,000. And even if we take the number two, is 453 uh, Chrome Squiggles. So it's a huge amount. We can visit this address on OpenC and verify. Look at this. There is a plethora of assets in this wallet. Now, why is this relevant again? Because if you look at a, at a floor price of eight or nine ether, and you multiply for all these assets, all these chromic squiggles here, this, you're looking at millions of dollars. Uh, but it's also true that if they started to sell, to flow the market with these types of assets below floor price, uh, the value of the asset would be destroyed. Imagine if you had just bought one at around seven or eight ether, and this guy had the, the, the strength to start selling at five or six, uh, he would be able to break the market, so to speak. He would be able to really dump prices. And this is why it is important when we look at NFTs to understand concepts such as concentration of owners, ownership how the token is distributed. As a means of comparison, if we look at the Border Ape Yacht Club, the average is two apes, almost two apes per address, which is not too bad, right? Because the difference is the following, guys, to explain even, even in a different way. Uh, if I own one ape and I change my mind about how valuable this asset is, I can sell one of them. But if I own 100 of them and I change my mind about how to value bored apes, how they should be uh, evaluated and it's time for me to sell and sell quick uh, because I, I believe that I've realized something that other people have not realized, uh, then I can really move the market compared to somebody that just owns one. So be mindful of this concept. However, on the positive side, think how early we are. We are extremely, extremely early if an asset that is so popular in the space right now, uh, in the art blocks curated space, which is a very successful project in the NFT space, only uh, sports, only shows uh, these kind of numbers in terms of distribution. Uh, it, it is nothing if you consider that these are global numbers for the entire planet. If you wanted to have a visual clue, this is how the distribution looks. It's the, the decay is very, very sharp of this, of this curve and how fast it, uh, it decelerates to addresses that own just a very small amount of these, of these tokens. Let's go look and look at other metrics. Um, I wanted to display here the Chromi Squiggle floor price for the current month and how that has been evolving. And from the end of July or from the beginning of the month, if you please, uh, we moved from a uh, Ether price, Ether floor price of three, around three Ether, to a realized price of 7.7 .7 Ether. Now, this is not the ask price, this is the transaction price. So there have, there have been transactions at this price point. Um, and when we looked before at 8.5, 8.6 as a floor price, that was the ask price. So we do not know if they will be able, if this, those sellers will be able to realize that price point that they are asking for. But this is realized, the 7.7 .7 here is realized price. And this move is, is, is huge. 
uh, another important metric is the uh, count of sales that occurred. And I plotted it both in Ether and in wrapped Ethereum. Um, this is overlaid, by the way. It is not stacked, which means that there have been on the uh, on August 9, there have been 143 uh, sales in Ether and five in wrapped Ether. Now, why is this important? Why this chart matters? It matters because it's fairly liquid. Supply is very concentrated, we said that, but there are a lot of people that are moving a lot of these, uh, of these assets, and this is not a cryptocurrency, this is an NFT. Uh, so having this level of liquidity is not banal at all, not banal at all, because we are in the triple digits some, some days. Um, plus, I wanted to plot another chart that I also find super interesting, trying to answer uh, a question. The question is the following. Is it more convenient? Is it, is it cheaper to buy with Ether or to buy with wrapped Ethereum? So the value of Ether and the value of, wrap, of wrapped Ethereum is virtually identical. So if I'm able to, if I know, if I realize that it's always cheaper for me to buy with one token or another consistently over time, maybe this means that I should try to, to use that methodology or the, that, that, that token rather than uh, the other one. And why this is important is because the data shows that throughout this month, throughout the month of August, uh, sales were realized consistently, especially sales at, at floor price, right? Uh, were realized consistently at a lower price point when in wrapped Ethereum rather than when in Ether. This tells us another uh, information. This is another fact that is super important. We know that wrapped Ether is used when you do not buy now, when you place an offer on a token, when you basically are placing a bid for an auction or to a, a seller that is not selling at the price point you're offering at, you're, 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 offering, you're bidding below the price at which he, will like, he posted he wants to sell. And this is, uh, in my opinion, super interesting because it's basically signaling to you uh, for these types of token, and we will look at other types of token, but for this type of token, for this type of NFT, it tends to be more convenient to place a bid. It tends to be cheaper to place a bid because you will be able to realize a purchasing price of uh, a higher, uh, of, um, a lower purchasing price. So you will be able to get a little bit better of a bargain on this one. Now, guys, this video I talked about the Chrome Squiggle, but if you have requests for specific tokens analysis, for specific NFT in the art blocks curated space, uh, in the art blocks curated projects, uh, please ask me because I am happy to do that analysis. Um, and uh, let me know into the comments what you would like and th those that will take the a higher number of thumbs up are those that are going to analyze the first. Guys, if you enjoyed the content, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. And with that, thank you very much and see you in the next video.